Hey guys and welcome to the first chapter of Anarchy Circus, an oddly lit novella. There's 13 in the series and this is the first one and I really hope you enjoy it. Chapter 1 The car had barely moved. Amada's family and friends were in her dad's people carrier, stuck in a queue on a country road wedged between two farms. Trees had grown old on either side with their canopies providing dappled shade, which was a slight relief from the baking sun. Still, even the wind felt hot. Twelve-year-old Amada was finding it unbearable. She'd put on a sleeveless top, shorts, and tied back her light brown hair, but it didn't seem to cool her down much. Sitting next to her was Mishana, or Mish for short, one of her two best friends, reading a glossy magazine. She was wearing a tank top, leggings and sandals. Her black hair had been set in curls with a dainty headband and a few jewelled clips. How she could keep so prim and proper in such humidity, Arma didn't know. But Stancy, her other bestie, was wearing a basketball jersey and three-quarter length trousers. He also looked thoroughly uncomfortable and was practically hanging out the open window for air. Arma's mum, Suzanne, was in the front passenger seat. She was knitting a pink and blue scarf that she would hold up for inspection every now and then, whilst her dad, Paul, was strumming the steering wheel to living on a prayer. Arma leaned forward, pointing over her dad's shoulder. I can see the gates! The line of cars were radiating heat, distorting their view, but the gates stood out as they were tall and red. It better be as scary as last year, Stancy said dropping his headphones to his neck. Arma was excited as she said, It will be. I saw in the end. Ow! A foot had flown over the back of her chair, knocking her temple. It belonged to her seventeen-year-old sister, Julie, who was lounging in the back seat situated in the boot of the large car. She had been so quiet that Arma had forgotten she was there. Arma? Mum asked, concerned. Mum, she kicked my head. Julie, be careful. Oh, she can't hear you. She has her headphones in and she's not wearing her seatbelt. Julie, Dad said sternly. She didn't respond. Arma turned to look at her, seeing she had one foot over Arma's chair and the other on the headrest of the seat, and her jacket behind her head as a pillow. Her hair was bleached blonde, though her roots were really dark, and she tied it up in the tightest ponytail on the top of her head. She had bright tacky makeup on, and was wearing one of her signature garish tracksuits. She saw Arma looking and hissed, What? Arma turned back to Dad, who'd seen her display through the rearview mirror, so he growled, Right. Paul, don't, Mum said, but she still held on to the door handle, knowing what he was going to do. Stancy rushed to get his mobile phone out and held it up for a selfie, whilst Mish carried on reading her hair and lifestyle magazine, oblivious to what was going on. Dad waited as the cars in front went further away, allowing enough space for him to suddenly pick up speed. He barely went three metres before braking suddenly, making Mish mutter a curse word in surprise, as they all pressed against their belts, except Julie. She went crashing to the footwell, swearing her head off. "'What the hell?' Julie cried as she picked herself up, her earphones now dangling over her face. Language, Mum scorned. Belt up, Julie, Dad warned, physically and verbally. Stancy was trying to not laugh as he watched the footage back on his phone. Arma whispered, please put that on my friends, but he wasn't too sure. Stancy wasn't afraid of Julie like most kids were, but there'd be a lot of hell to come with such an action. I knew I should have gone with Brady and the others, Julie began. You freaks ruin everything. She shoved her earphones back in and turned her music up much louder. Stancy and the others exchanged looks before he nodded, and Arma grew excited. Then the atmosphere changed to anxiety as Dad said, oh, Damn, the lot looks full. They were so close to the main gates now. Before them were two men ushering cars in. One was tall and skinny and seemed to be keeping count while the other was shorter and fat, and he was telling the cars where to go. Both were wearing beanie hats and trench coats, despite sweating like crazy in the heat. Mum clicked her fingers as something occurred to her. Forgot my earmuffs. They sell them here, Arma said. We're not paying those prices, Dad said grumpily. Then they were next in line as Dad rolled up to the gates. In big yellow letters the name read, Anarchy Circus. You'll scream so much you'll die. 
Beside the writing was a painting of a cartoon crow with a clown wig and a tiny bowler hat. That's when she spotted them. She slid back into her seat, but it was Julie who leaned over to whisper mockingly, Look, Armour, crows. There were eight of them, just sitting there on the gate and fence, with people taking pictures and throwing them food. Mum gave a frustrated sigh. Julie! Amma pretended not to be bothered, but her heart was racing. Mish looked to Stancy, who was well aware of her fear, but all he could say was, It's all part of the show. She shrugged, pretending not to care. Then the fat man pushed his head through Mum's window. You're the last car. Your space is right at the back of the field. Find it and park in it, or else we'll move your car. All right, Dad said, a little annoyed at the man's instant irritation. And drive in quickly so we can get these gates closed before any other idiots try to drive in. He then backed off and waved them in impatiently. Mum was astonished. How rude! Dad did as instructed, driving in fast as the roadies rushed to get the field locked up. There was an instant hail of shouting and beeping, but the men barked, Just park up and walk in. You have ten minutes. Dad heard that and almost sped through the people and cars to find his space. Can't fault their organisational skills, I suppose, Mum said, as they hurried into their spot that was hardly big enough. The roadies had done a good job. There wasn't a single space left. They squeezed out, which was harder for Dad, since his job as a truck driver didn't give him much opportunity to work off his gut, and he said, They best be good for the stupid price of these tickets. It's doubled from last year. It's gonna rock, Stancy said. He was almost jumping. I just finished this in time, Mum said, as she wrapped the scarf around her neck. Heading down the lot, they were overshadowed by the circus tent coloured in faded blue and red stripes, with mist escaping the vents at the top. Large fences kept the bustling crowd back, and the travellers' village was just visible around to the back of the field where caravans and SUVs were parked. I'm mafting already, Stancy said, wafting his top, and yet he still slid on his jacket. Armour was about to put on hers when Miss shouted, They're coming! The crowd jumped with fright, and then they moved in excitement as a tense entrance parted to expose darkness and mist. The two men that came out first were members of the famed creepy crew, and they weren't your average clowns. Whilst they did don the usual baggy pants, suspenders, nylon afros, overly sized shoes and thick layers of face paint, the creepy crew had long since let it deteriorate. Their makeup was cracking and falling away like dust, even showing off their tattoos. Their clothes had been badly patched, and they never smiled. They only showed a constant expression of disinterest. Stancy once remarked that they resembled convicts doing community service. The gates opened and the people flooded in. Most were eager to get a photo with the clowns except one. Julie was hiding behind Dad, so Armour said eerily, Look, Julie, clowns. Julie simply glared. Strobe lights flashed as thunder played amidst the spooky music. Cobwebs were hanging inches above their heads and the air smelt bad, but most of all it was freezing. Coats on, Mum said, as they donned the rest of their winter clothing. The drop in temperature was just another quirky part of such a unique circus. It would bring people out in their troths, donned in winter clothing and armed with thermos flasks. Die-hard fans said it added to the experience and Armour agreed, it had you shaking even before the show began. There were camera flashes going off all over. Mish seemed happy standing in what daylight she could reach the foyer and snapping selfies, though she seemed more interested in what filter to use. Stancy had his doing a panoramic shot. Armour took her phone out, wanting a picture of her own, but the moment her camera loaded, all she could see was darkness and weird lens flares. She wasn't surprised, since this was a hand-me-down from her dad, as she'd broken hers at the beginning of the year, and they weren't flush enough with cash to just buy her a new one. So, she gave up and stood with her dad taking pictures. There are only two clowns, he growled. Can't get close enough for a shot. Paul, Mum said, nudging him towards a side door hidden by a curtain where a third member of the creepy crew emerged. He was wearing a wet-looking purple wig, had a lazy bottom lip, and his faded baggy pants were huge. Dad was on him in seconds. Hey, mate, over here! The clown responded by trudging over with his ridiculously sized but badly repaired green clown shoes. When Armour jumped beside him for a photo, Dad got the camera ready. But suddenly the clown reached out and pulled Julie in as well. 
She froze with horror, and Dad wasn't slow to snap the shot. Brilliant! Both my girls in a picture! Julie tore away and cried, Ugh, That thing was horrible! She was shaking as if there were bugs on her. Julie! Mum scorned, before giving her apologies to the clown, but he'd already walked away. Arma didn't think he'd been all that bothered. Julie wasn't finished. He felt as hard and as cold as ice. Is there crap on my neck? Mum rolled her eyes, but the crowd hushed as the speakers crackled into life. A sorry welcome, my timely victims, droned a man's voice. It was Maestro Mechanicky, the circus leader, and he sounded so brilliantly English as he spoke with the height of boredom. If you'd care to move yourself to the arena, your horrible hour of entertainment is about to begin. Now move. The crackle died, and a curtain opened. It was even darker in the arena, so they had to feel their way across the benches. It was taking a while for everyone to be seated, and there was no noise beside their excited nattering. Julie was terrified as she whispered, Dad, they're behind me. Who? The clowns! There was a sudden boo, and a flash of light as Stancy had snuck up behind her and taken a picture. She screeched and grabbed her dad, but the lights came on, and she saw the trick. Before she could assault him, the crowd gasped and began to cheer. Look, Mish said, pointing to the centre of the arena where a figure was standing. It was no other than Maestro Mechanicky. He was bowed slightly so that they couldn't see his face, with his arms outstretched, holding a bullhorn in one hand and a furled whip in the other. He was wearing his signature black top hat and red performer's jacket atop a black waistcoat with matching military-esque trousers, finished off with knee-high boots polished so brilliantly that they shined. When he finally looked up, his wild, wiry, greying black hair was barely tamed under his hat, and his narrow features were sharp and made harrowing by the shadows caused from his top lights. Welcome, he barked, his voice travelling as if aided by a microphone. For tonight's entertainment, you will see daredevil stunts, grotesque freaks of nature. Hey up, Julie, that's your next line of work, Stancy muttered, and pulled away as she tried to punch him around her dad, who hissed a warning. There will be death-defying escapades and illusions darker than your most horrible dreams. He went quiet and eyed the crowd with a steely stare. Don't blame me if you come away with fewer body parts than what you came with. At that he whipped the ground and laughed loudly, his voice bursting from speakers about their heads. Music blared and clowns barrel-rolled into the arena. The act was followed by painted performers on stilts, clowns riding each other, with a few running madly about the outside of the ring, throwing muck and feathers and all manner of things at the screaming spectators. Something long and floppy hit Julie in the face, and she shrieked louder than all around. Dad was too busy laughing to care, but Stancy was quick on the ball and started recording her. Arma knew it was going to be an awesome show.